Okay, so welcome to lab two. Lab two, we're gonna do two port impedance measurements. And so we're gonna be using channel two um, and the output of the Bode 100 for our two ports. We have a cable already connected to channel two. And we're gonna start just by measuring something that we know. That's something that I always recommend is every time you set a new setup, you should measure something that you know the answer to. And since we're measuring uh, capacitors and planes that are milliohms, we want to make sure that we can measure a milliohm resistor. So in this case, we're going to measure a two milliohm current sense resistor. We know its value, uh, and so we're going to go ahead and we're going to make that measurement. And what you can see is that um, at low frequency, we end up with a relatively high impedance in our two milliohm resistor. In fact, we're measuring over four milliohms. We showed in the lecture that that's because of the ground loop that's created in this measurement itself. And in fact, that is the parallel resistance of this ground here in parallel with this ground here. And so we can't help but see that in our measurement. And so when we make low impedance measurements, it's important that we include our common mode coaxial transformer because that is the part that uh, cancels that low resistance for us. So now in this case, we're going to connect our common mode coaxial transformer. And I need one more cable set. Thanks. And now we can connect the common mode coaxial transformer, repeat our series measurement. And now you'll see we're very close to 2 milliohms. We still end up with a little bit of a variation, and that variation is due to the common mode range or the common mode uh, effect of our common mode transformer. So in general, the common mode coaxial transformer will work down to about 1,000 ohms, and it's precision matched to 50 ohms all the way up to about 500 megahertz. But now we can measure our 2 milliohms. It's relatively flat, and we can see the 200 picohenries of the resistor, and that 200 picohenries is set primarily by the physical length of the resistor. The bigger the resistor, the higher the inductance. Uh, wide resistors have a lower inductance, and uh, long skinny resistors and uh, leaded resistors, of course, have much higher inductance. But now we know that we can make a low impedance measurement. And so with that setup, we can also look at measuring capacitors. The capacitor measurement, as we showed in the lecture, is made up of two parts. Part of it is the physical part, or the mount. And the mount, again, is a function of the physical length of the part. It's important when we make these measurements that we understand what we're going to do with them. Because if we're going to use these capacitors as measurements for EM simulation, the EM simulation knows how physically large that capacitor is, and it's going to add the inductance of the mount. And so if we included the mount in our measurement and put it into an EM simulator, we would have accounted for the mount twice. It has to be removed before you can simulate it in an EM simulator. On the other hand, if we're going to use this measurement to make a model for SPICE, SPICE knows nothing about the physical dimensions of this part, and it's not going to add the mount. And so we need to include the mount if we're making the measurement for SPICE. And so for that reason, we often end up measuring both conditions. So first, let's measure the mount. And here we're measuring the mount just by putting a, a shorted copper trace across the pads. And we can save that to our memory here. And now we can see that there's oh, a few milliohms. And now we can see our inductance at the higher frequency. And that is the inductance that's associated with the physical length of the capacitor. Of course, if we went through vias on the board, that would add even more inductance. This is just the physical length of the capacitor. Our boards are, are very, very small. Our grounds are very short. And in fact, when we use these ourselves, we typically do this in a 3D finite element simulation so that we know exactly what the inductance of that board is down to picohenries.
And typically the resistance is low enough that we don't really need to worry about it. We can typically ignore the resistance, but we are very concerned about the inductance. And that is the major portion of the inductance in the capacitor is the physical mount. Now we can measure the capacitor itself. This one happens to be a 470 microfarad tantalum capacitor. And so here's the 470 microfarad capacitive region. Here's the frequency dependent ESR and here's the ESL. We can actually tell quite a bit about this capacitor. So because of the frequency dependent ESR, we know that it's not a polymer capacitor. It's a standard tantalum capacitor. Polymers are much flatter and they, they typically end up much pointier than, than this. Uh, but there is the mounted capacitor impedance. And so that's typically what we'd want to convert into spice so that we can make a spice measurement. And we can save that one in memory also. And so the difference between those two inductances is the difference between the mounted capacitor and the unmounted capacitor. And if we turn that on, now we can see here's the uh, unmounted inductance and here's the mounted inductance. This becomes a really big deal for two reasons. So one reason is that this inductance is about twice as high mounted as unmounted. And so if we get that wrong, that would say that we would need to use twice as many tantalum capacitors as we actually need. And that's kind of a big deal, partly because the capacitors are big and they take a lot of room. And also it's important uh, because they cost money. And so while we're trying to optimize our cost, we wouldn't want to use more capacitors than we need to. But it's also a big deal from the decoupling standpoint uh, because it becomes important when we determine what the ceramic capacitors are for the high-speed decoupling. Those aren't arbitrary and they are quite specific. There is some exact value of capacitance that's required to decouple this inductance. And we're going to deal with that in, uh, in part three. But it really is important that we understand that inductance of both the capacitor and the planes because those are going to establish the exact value of decoupling that we ultimately need at the high speed end. And so that's how we make the two port impedance measurement and that's what's so critical about it and, uh, and so now we've done it.